right, so your question is about, what, what, should we do the whole question? Or do you want to just do the, or just understand why? I mean, I got the entire system. question wrong when I did it. Okay, so this question <laughs> is just talking about if, like, if someone is unable to borrow, why it ends up being cut off. Like, what does their intertemporal budget line look like? So if we're looking at two periods of consumption, if we're looking at C1 versus C2, we know that there's always going to be a point here that is the no lending, no borrowing point. The idea of no lending, no borrowing point is just somebody uh, who is not borrowing any money against their future income. It's they're not uh, saving any of their current income for future. So down here, we have our overall current resources. In this problem in the course pack, it's just income. And in the future, it's just income as well. So this point definitely has to be on my intertemporal budget line. The budget line is just a budget constraint. It just tells me the different possibilities that I can consume. So I know that's going to be a point there. Okay. So does the interest rate have nothing to do with this pro like At this point, it has nothing to do with this okay. point. That's a great question. Interest rates will not affect this rate at all because in order for an interest rate to affect my consumption bundle, I have to either be borrowing or saving. So the $100 bill in my pocket, if I consume it today, is not going to have any influence with the interest rate. Very good question. So if I want to consume more than my current income, I have to be able to borrow. If I want to consume less than my current income, that means that I'm going to be able to save. Right? In this question, it just says that Ray does not have the ability to borrow. That's the idea. Ray doesn't have the ability to borrow. What that's telling me is any point out here, right? Any point out here forever that's greater than Y1 is not available to them, right? So it's not available. So I can just say all of these are gone. So if I'm just trying to represent a line that says, hey, this is what can be done. This is the intertemporal budget line. It's going to be kinked at that point. Okay. But of course, somebody who they have current income, they can be a saver. And so we say, OK, if they save, what's this going to look like? In this case, we're saying there's a constant real interest rate. The idea is every dollar that you save this way, so every one unit you save to the left, you are going to increase by that dollar in the future plus the interest rate. So every one I go left, I'm going up by 1 plus r. And it's constant, so that means it's going to be a constant line that looks like this. That's why the slope of the line is negative 1 plus r, because every time you go to the left, you get 1 plus the interest rate. So that's what that looks like. And so we'll now see that anything inside this purple, right? all of these are options that they can consume. Mm -hmm. Everything outside, they can't. Okay. You send me a, I need a different color. Here we go. This right here, I guess another part of that question was just this point is going to be all of my current income times 1 plus r. Because I'm able, like this is remember this is the maximum I can consume if I saved everything, plus y two. Mm -hmm. So I could also consume everything in the future. And that'll be everything that's shaded in there. Mm -hmm. And that's everything in here. Yep. All possible. Okay. Those are all possible points. Remember one of the assumptions we're making with this uh, intertemporal budget constraint, this this model, is that we're not leaving any everything anything over. So the consumption is going to happen along the line. There's no nothing left over after you die. Okay. okay? The last part of this question, this was an old exam question, was saying, I want you to show me that if, Ray, if Ray's preferences was to be a borrower, show me with indifference curves that uh, he would have been better off. Like, show me that than if he is borrow constraint. So what we have to do is we have to say, OK, well, let's assume that he could have borrowed. It would look something like this, because the same thing, and only it's the opposite. Every one I go over, I'm going to be losing one plus the interest rate. Every dollar I want to borrow against, I'm going to lose one plus the interest rate. So that's going to the right. 
the information that was given was that Ray wants to be a borrower. So I know I can pick any point here and say, hey, this right here must be the point where he wanted to be. So I know that the optimal consumption bundle is where your indifference curve is tangent to that point. So I'll say, okay, let's just go ahead and make a nice indifference curve that looks like that. Okay. This indifference curve has some sort of utility. If Ray is budget constrained, can he reach that point? He cannot, right? He can't reach it because all of these points on this indifference curve are where these red dots are, which is outside of his budget constraint. Remember what an indifference curve is showing us. It's just an entire indifference plane. There's an infinite number of these that's just showing as I move away from the origin, I become happier. Because as I consume more, I become happier. Okay? So I have to just kind of keep moving inward, which makes me worse off, until I do reach it. And you would see that this point will have one indifference curve to, which will give me utility to. And so my, my discussion point has to say, I showed you that this point was unattainable, mm -hmm. would have been attainable if Ray was able to borrow. So now Ray has to move to a different indifference curve, indifference curve two, where he is worse off than he was, but that's the best he can now become. So does it not have to be at the, the vertex of like, so it definitely it has, has to be at the kink. Yeah, no, it has to be at the kink, like for like the tangency, like does it have to be at the vertex or no? No, it, it just has okay. to be where it crosses, okay. right? And I know one of the other questions that was asked, like, okay, well, what if I drew it this way, where I like, I have this, and then like, then it looks something like this, but you can't have indifference curves cross. And the reason why you can't have indifference curves cross Fire draw says, is any two goods? We can just do C1 and C2. And let's say there's an indifference curve that looks like this, and then there's an indifference curve that looks like this. So they cross. Okay? So this is, let's just say this is utility one, this is utility two. The reason why this can't happen is let's look at a couple of points. Let's look at, let's say this is a C2 point here, right? And so you can see there's two different levels of C1. What's better here? this point or this point. I have the same level of second period consumption, right? But I have more C1 on this one, so that means this point has to be better, right? So that would tell me that this indifference curve, U1, so this tells me u one's greater than U2. You can probably see where I'm going with this. If I take a point down here, C1 is constant, right? I have more C2, so then this point must be better because it's more of C2. And so this point tells me that U2 is greater than U1. And that's not, you can't do that. Right? So that violates the idea. So you can't have indifference curves that cross. So they have to just be in this shape like that.